what is up guys we're back for another video today it's less training tips more uh, review of certain shoes um, as you can see I've got a line of shoes right here uh, I wanted to make a quick video on this because you know I being a med student I'm always buying shoes on budget and so I normally am buying previous year uh, like lineups for shoes so that I can afford a quality shoe instead of spending $250 on a race shoe, I'm only spending $100 on a race shoe that was still top of the line just a few years ago. You know, it's been hard to find more recent, uh, you know, updates or reviews on some of these shoes. I by no means have been a long time runner, but I do have some experience with a certain line of shoes at this point. I want to share my feedback so that if you guys are interested in buying some of these shoes uh, to kind of, you know, so you know where you're at. Um, what you maybe should be able to expect from them. Thing off too, I'm a six foot one, 185, 186 pound uh, athlete. So that's one thing I think to take into consideration. With my experience with so different types of racing, I find that you know, top of the line, the more niche you get uh, with products, you know, the companies are really generating these shoes <clears throat> for what their ideal racer is. So if you look at the ideal weight uh, and size of you know, professional athletes, you know, if you're buying those top end shoes. Now, if you're buying more of the mid range shoes, then I think you can, you know, expect a little bit more, you know, bandwidth from the shoe that you're looking at. But overall, I think that's one thing to consider. I've found myself that, you know, shoes that last some people, you know, 400 miles really only last me about 350 to 300 miles before my feet start to really uh, tell the difference of the shoe and whether or not it's supporting me. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, I, but one thing that is great though is this shoe line. So the shoe line that I was going to go through is kind of a three-way, uh, three-shoe split for uh, all your running needs. Until recently, my shoe line was the Saucony Endorphin Shift Two, Saucony Endorphin Speed Two. And the Saucony Endorphin Pro 2. Each of these shoes serves a certain purpose in my lineup, uh, and they kind of evolved as I learned more about the shoe and how I, for, you know, how my fitness progressed in them. Uh, I wanted to talk quickly about each three, um, the pros and cons, and what I think you should I think you should know um, about this shoe lineup. First up, um, the Saucony Endorphin Shift 2. So this is a non-plated shoe. It's got a quality amount of foam. The tread has lasted, I mean, this shoe's got probably a little over, you know, three, 400 miles on it, probably 300 miles on this shoe. Um, and as you can see, it's worn nicely. I've already, this is the second pair of shifts I've gone through. It's a heavy shoe. Um, it's got big heel support, as you can see, wrapped around here. Um, decent flex. And you can see that the foam has really held up for the most part over those miles. Um, that I've put into it. The upper, you know, hasn't deteriorated. I've ran through lots of rain, lots of different terrain, uh, some off, you know, some gravel, nothing crazy off road, but overall this shoe has held up great. What this shoe, as you can see on it, I've written the slow and steady. Um, the Saucony Endorphin Shift 2 is a great, you know, long, slow trainer. It keeps your feet happy, keeps, you know, soft. You can run fast in them. I did my first Ironman 70.3 race in these. That's because I was just a one shoe runner at that point. But um, if you're getting into running and you want a shoe that can do everything and you know, you're know you new to running, you don't know how your feet are gonna respond, I think that's a safe shoe to start out with because the Shift Twos are like 60, 70 bucks right now because of how old of a shoe it is. Um, but you can get lots of miles. <laughs> I've done speed work in these. I've done races in them. I've done long, slow runs at this point. Now they're my shoe for my chill long runs because it's a harder shoe for me to push fast now in. So it kind of forces me to take it easy and just chill. And it's a comfortable shoe at pretty much all paces. It's a little, you feel the weight when you're moving fast, but it's a comfortable shoe overall. Good stability, never rolled an ankle in it or anything. Um, overall, it just keeps the feet happy. Not a lot of feedback. Like I said, it's a pretty heavy-ish shoe, but overall great for long distances those chill, long, slow runs, I call them LSD runs, long, slow distances. Uh, great for that. Uh, overall, yeah, 
I would definitely recommend this to anybody who's new into running um, and needs a shoe that can kind of do it all when they're still figuring it out. Next up is the Saucony Endorphin Speed 2. So this is a plated shoe. It's not carbon plated. It's nylon plated. Um, it does have, you know, a decent amount of spring left in it. This shoe, you know, has gotten a decent amount of miles. I've run a lot in this shoe. You can kind of see there's starting to get some, especially on the periphery out here. I'm, I land inverted. Um, overall, this shoe, I've done a lot of training in this shoe. Um, <clears throat> from long, slow runs to speed work to track work. Never raced in this shoe, though. Um, I think you could race in this shoe. I think if you need a budget race day shoe um, and all day trainer, if you want a shoe that can, if you're getting into racing and not just running to run and you want to go fast, but you also are on a budget, the Endorphin Speed 2s are an amazing shoe. This has already been reported. You could probably find tons of different <coughs> data uh, out there and different reviews about that shoe line because it's just a quality shoe. People, you know, Saucony apparently meant it to be more of a speed workout day shoe, but I've been pretty comfortable in it for quite, you know, some long runs. I did a 14 mile chill pace in the middle of the day and I was comfortable. They're nice and light. Um, they're the good feedback. Um, they don't give as much back as a true carbon plated shoe or stiffer foam setup, but that's understandable. Overall though, I think it's, um, you know, they run around, they're actually kind of still expensive because they're a hot commodity because they're no longer made, I think, but, um, people really like the shoe and they're not necessarily keen on trying to bump up to the speed threes, which is that, you know, price increase. It's the Saucony Endorphin Pro twos. So. This shoe's, you can see it's very stiff compared to the, the other shoe. Um, overall, this foam's hella great. This is my, this is a race day shoe for me. Um, uppers held up. I've raced more in the rain than I have in the dry with this shoe. And the upper has not deteriorated at all. It stayed tight, no rips, no tears. Um, overall, great shoe. You can get these for 80 bucks on Amazon now. So this is a carbon plated shoe that was, you know, brand new a couple couple years ago. I, whenever it came out, this was the top of the line um, for Saucony for some time. I don't think it's the best carbon plated shoe out there, but for 85 bucks, like, like, so this shoe, the Speed 2, has pretty much started to wear down for me, so I'm starting to really feel the shoe at time, feel my feet at the time. So instead of getting another pair of those, because those are more expensive, those are like 120, 130 now, still the Speed 2s. Um, I decided to retire this as my race shoe um, because of kind of the fallbacks of where I don't think it leads up to an amazing race shoe. I decided to go with the Saucony Elites, uh, Endorphin Elites for my new race shoe. I'm going to test those out soon. But overall, the Pro, great shoe. I just did a quality tempo run on me a day. Honestly, I think. The Pro 2 is more of a speed workout slash Ken Moonlight as a race day shoe. I would not consider it the other way around. Um, and I have some friends that are big time runners that kind of agree with me on this, that it's, it doesn't really give you that race day feel. It doesn't have an aggressive foot rock. <clears throat> it doesn't really keep your weight forward. Um, it's comfortable. It's light. But, it you know, you get out what you put into it. There's, there's something missing. There's a little bit less of aggression with the speed, uh, with the Pro 2s. Um, I've heard the Pro 3s might be different. I haven't tried them out. But again, $80, $85 for a carbon plated top of the line shoe that's going to give you great workouts and great racing. If you need something for that, the Pro 2 is a great way to go. You know, you can go all in now with these three shoes. <clears throat> you can get the Shift 2s for probably 60, 70 bucks on Amazon. Pro 2s for about 80 bucks. These for about 100 bucks. <clears throat> you know, that's 220 for three shoes. So 220 bucks, and that gets you through an entire season of, you know, running um, and racing. Whereas, like, I just bought the pair, a pair of Saucony Elites, which are 275 So if you need a quality run setup for cheap, I think this three uh, shoe setup, you know, will be great. I, you know, I did Philly Broad Street in an hour and five minutes in the Pro 2s. Uh, also do it in the Speed 2s. Again, though, I like the idea of having each of these is different. You know, you have a non-plated heavy, 
cushiony shoe that's great for racking miles for those easy like runs throughout the week. You've got a nylon plated shoe that gives you the support, especially as a heavier runner. I really notice the difference in the support that a shoe gives me when it has a plate in it. Um, but it's light. You don't feel like you're running your race shoes down. <clears throat> um, you know, it's a great shoe for pretty much all runs and races. And then the Pro 2. So, you know, great for tempo runs, great for speed sessions at the track, and great for race day. Um, and all on a budget, obviously. So I think, you know, I'd be happy to answer any questions, uh, you know, about other things. I know there's much more elaborate breakdowns of these shoes out there, but not everybody, I think, is a runner junkie um, that understands, can grasp all the things that some of these people, you know, break these shoes down with and are just looking for, you know, they hear all these fancy shoes out there and how people have multiple shoes, but they're just like, that's all expensive. Um, and that's kind of why I wanted to make this video. I wanted to make a quick breakdown of, you know, each of these shoes, what I think they're good for, and overall why I think that they could be in a lineup for a relatively cheap cost. Um, you know, and I think for 220 for three shoes, um, I get you pretty far. Um, you know, if you're averaging, I average 25 miles a week, um, and these shoes have lasted me um, a year. So, overall, you know, that's my input on them. Uh, definitely feel free to ask any questions or, you know, give me give your own input on the shoes if you have. Uh, but anyway, I'll catch you guys next time. Hope this was helpful.